how are you? I'm fine, how are you doing? Good, I'm here with the Invisible Gardener, and um, our podcast is From Your Soil to Your Soul, or From Your Soul to Your Soil. Right, it doesn't matter, it's the same thing, yeah. right? How are you, Andy? What do you want to um, tell us today? Well, you know, I, uh, like everybody else, I've been keeping an eye on the, on the wars going on in Ukraine, and you know, Russia is the largest, world's largest supplier of all the stuff that they needed to make chemical fertilizers. And because uh, of the war, they're they're not producing it anymore. All the third world countries are going to start. They're they're going to start. They're saying we're going to start because we can't get fertilizers to make more food. Same thing with China. Other countries are are having a problem because they buy from Russia and they make all this stuff. And it it it, it occurred to me is like, wow, this is a perfect time to say no. As a matter of fact, we're going to start. I mean, they have everything they need. Take look at Africa. Look I'll at have everything I need. I mean, here in America, I see people using this chemical crop. Right, we right, know. right. You know, but I was saying in other, third world countries, they have the resources. Right, and they've been freaking out. The Sri Lankans, they're all all these farmers are committing suicide. Right, and they have the resources. They have the animals. They have the land. They have everything. The ocean, everything that they can start. Uh, uh, paying attention to that and using that and to they could be so up. wealthy because they are so wealthy right already and they can grow food and sell it instead of saying let's buy some fertilizers to ruin our our land some more and be rest be to be holding on the on this country to to do all no of course when you buy fertilizers you have to get to the pesticides there's no way around because the soil is dead you know there's nothing there to protect the plants so you have to and, and it's a it's a win-win for the chemical companies right but this is a perfect time because right now you, you really need to survive so all of us right we all need to survive we all need to and quit buying the junk quit going for the junk because what we do ourselves in the, each person what each person does makes a big difference because right. i was thinking why organic gardening can save the earth so and, how can we all do that Andy, how can we all make our own soil? I mean, kitchen, you know, how? I so mean, what I see is that there are so many different situations with people. Some people have property. You're lucky you have some soil, some place to, you can actually turn it. Some people don't. They have just a condo, they have a porch, or they have, uh, you know, I can uh, have a talking to somebody from Chicago. I, I don't have anything. <laughs> I got a room, you know, I have to go buy stuff. And so, um, and, and I was telling him, well, why don't you go out and, and join a gardening club? Because, you know, a lot of cities, what they do now is they put a space aside that you can have a little a little raised bed or two, you know. Uh, so they have a big area. Lots Everybody has their own raised bed. And you can work it out with everybody. I'll grow this. You grow that. And, and so there's always a, play, a way. I remember when I grew up in New York City, okay, so I had a garden on, on the roof. Right. That's become very chic there now when chefs have gardens on right. the roofs that they can pull from in Brooklyn and right. Manhattan. Right. right. Exactly. So you can always grow someplace. You can always grow. Even on your own home, I've noticed people, what they do is they, they put soil on their, on their roof and they grow on their roof. You know, that's so cool, too. So we have to become very innovative and we have to really step up now because now is the time because this is, I think it's getting really out of hand. More the more of the world is, is, is wanting to do chemicals. They, they want to pollute more. All these third world countries say, well, you did it. We can do it too now, right? You used Roundup, you used Malathion. We want to use it too. And, and they, it, it, they don't need to do that. What's the other one that begins with a G? Uh, Glucophate, glucosonphate, something like that. It's yeah. basically Roundup. Right. Right. And we, we've seen people here, I think we talked about that the last time that, you know, the state park and uh, right. you, are using it. Right. It's really hard. It doesn't know, allow it. It's really hard. Like Malibu is poison free, right? Except if you don't count the city and the state. Except if you, I, it doesn't make any sense. It's, it's a real bummer. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, that is ridiculous because the city and the state are the ones who do the parks. Right. Yeah. You know, and I mean, not the city, but the 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 county and and the state. So the state parks. I like here in Malibu, we have lots of state. All oh, these are state parks, and and the city say may say we don't want chemicals, but the state are still using the chemicals left and right. Right here in our neighborhood. Exactly right, and and California, you would think that they would 
okay, so we want to have clean gas. Well, why don't we have clean clean uh, gardens and clean soil and all that stuff? We, you are. You're going to help us. Right. The cities need to concentrate more and more on growing food. Uh, I remember when I was with the tree people, and I learned about the uh, the amount of uh, I forget what you call it, but basically, if you fly over with a, a city with a plane, you want to see a certain amount of cover. You don't want to see everything buildings. You want to see trees and flowers. Some it's, it's a name for it, a ground cover, a uh, cover. You know, and they were saying eighty percent is what you want. Right now, we have the opposite. Maybe twenty percent of his trees and flowers and plants. The rest of it is eighty percent buildings, roads. And and that's also contributing to a global ch- climate warming as well. Yeah, that's out of balance then. then right. it's, it's a big it's a big problem. So it, and it's really really with me. I've always been keeping it simple. And one of the things about I liked about Jesus, he would say things in a simple way that anybody can deal with it. And that's what I like to do. I like to keep it simple with people. Say, look, you don't have to be so complicated. I know we've talked about refractometer. You don't need a refractometer. But if you're like a guy who's really scientific minded and wants to know things and they could use that. Like my friend Layton, he loves a refractometer. He uses it all the time. I use it quite regularly too, because it's people, they, if they don't believe me, they'll believe it, an, an instrument. An instrument says this, like when you go shopping, you can tell the, your value of your food. And I think, I think it's so, it's so wonderful when you go to the store and you say that tomato is crap there's <laughs> nothing in it it may look good there's nothing in it and this is the proof put it on my machine go ahead you know and they will say well your machine's broken and so it's a process that we all have to learn uh, so in your case for example you know and, you, and you're very similar to everybody else is that nobody's been paying attention to the health of the soil all the time they've been there so the, your property's been there for quite a few years and if that had been happening you know wow. Decades, decades exactly right. of fire that burned all this plastic and, and it that is the problem. So everyone from that point on is, um, we're aware. I mean, I, I know I'm aware and we have a little gardening club here and there's some people that are aware um, and that compost. But the majority, I guess, don't. Is that what you're saying? So then what what is simple things everyone could do first pay attention to the fact that you're throwing a lot of stuff away i find it amazing that gardeners go rake up every leaf everything in the dump goes that's supposed to stay in the ground that's supposed to turn into soil so we have stopped that process of making soil animals don't come and die things don't happen anymore to to revive the soil so it starts to die off and so that's one of the things we have to do we have to stop our habit of being so clean we can actually Leave it on the ground, or we can turn it into a, a wonderful, whether it be compost or mulch. You can turn it into a mulch. In other words, break it down a little bit more. I need a mulching more for sure. But okay. I had those palm fronds, Andy, that were you know fourteen feet long by maybe fifty of them. I mean, what was I to do with that? Well, I I, re- I was reading about and interesting. You mentioned that I was reading about a company that because mainly they're a tree company. You know how these big grinders, yeah, yeah, yeah. They offer it to people, we'll go up to your place, throw everything to the grinder, or grind it right up into a really nice mulch, and you have it. We'll just charge you a small fee to grind it up for you. But that's what they do. They grind it up into a really nice, and then you can add that to your compost and your soil and work it, because a lot of people, what they do is when they get mulch, they throw it on top, and that's a fire hazard. Those fire, poof. But if you turn it into soil, so we want to get back into the soil produce, production business right mm-hmm. in the soil production business because there's no reason why the land needs to be stripped down nothing it actually can can have more and more soil build up that's what mother nature does that soil is made all the time but not if your gardener cleans it all up and throws it all away and there's nothing in the underground uh gene is kind of like that don't leave that there i said well that's going to break up in a few days and be gone you won't see it but it's in the ground that's what i've been doing without her knowing it i've been putting stuff around, it breaks down really nice, and then you have some soil. That's what we have to do at your place. Figure out a way to keep things. And that's why the, the worm farm and comp, making compost is so easy, like using the a bin, or in your case, you're probably going to get a tumbler. I don't like a tumbler so much as opposed to a bin, but you only have so much space. Maybe you could do the bins down below. You know what a bin is, right? How big is a bin? Four by four by four. Oh. Okay. Made out of wood. 
Oh, that seems like I have to make that, put it down there. Yeah, you know the palette, you one of those palettes that people use when they're shopping uh -huh. in the store? That's the, that's the size. That's basically the base of it. The rest of it is wood gets made with a top and everything and a hinge on it. And it's got air to breathe. And you, you, you make four of those next to each other. And this is like, uh, yours is not quite that big because you need to, they can handle a lot, a lot of food, like the errands, for example, uh, one of some of our customers, you know, right. you would use like two of them, say, you know. But they, they require work. You you throw everything in there that your garden produces. You layer it. You add things. And then when it's full, you dump it in the next one and continue that. So it's a process of constantly going out. And then that stuff, when it gets done, goes out to the property, under the trees, under whatever. It's a constant thing. Not that many people, I don't think any of our customers have any kind of setup to do that. They all just throw it away. They all just throw it away. So you can do a tumbler. And the tumbler does take, break it down for you, right? Much you know easier. Do what? A yeah. five hundred gallon tum oil drum on its side with a crank. Right, that's easier. The only problem is people don't go out there and crank. So they well, use mine is broken, but people do, and it turns out some really incredible compost. Right. When when I was in school, I went and got a a, um, a, a little. Uh, it's like a little fan belt. It's a little blade because it has a chain that goes down, and you put a we a gear onto your tumbler. So when it's turning, it was turning your tumbler all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's real easy. You put a rock in there, you put your stuff in there, and it tumbles for you, have it done in a couple of days. Gee, Andy, I've known you several years. How come you haven't done that for me? Oh, I haven't. Um, I haven't done. I There's yeah. lots of things I haven't done. When I was a kid, I actually got a bicycle. and hook it up to the tumbler, and you can exercise, so you can tumble the thing. You just have to get somebody into welding to weld you the thing together, and you have a little way to deal with it. The point is, is that it has to be an active thing. People throw food away all the time. So that's a different subject than, than compost because people think that you take food that you're going to throw away and you make a pile of it and go compost that way. That's not exactly the real way to do it because you're going to end up with rats and other creatures who are going to come after that food and ants and whatever. You have to do it a different way uh, to, to, to make the food. That's why the the worms are cool. The worm farm are a really cool way to do two things because you have to have two separate reasons why you have the worm. One is for the liquid and one is to feed them to make, you know, your food go through to make compost through that. Mm -hmm. And so there's a difference. And, and one way that you're basically feeding the worms to get their juice from them. The other way you you have a way to get your kitchen waste to dump it in there and let the worms eat it. And you need, but you need a lot of worms to do that. Like in your case, you want three or four of those worm beds in there because they will go, you produce a lot of food and you give the worms too much food, they die. <laughs> See, they can only handle so much food. So people don't, don't, do, don't really do that because it's too much work. I, when I was young, I decided to take the food, run in a blender, add some water to it, blend the food up and pour it into the compost pile. So it, it mashed it all up right away, really fast, you know. But then I guess it's, it's a process. Every day when you have food, you put it in your blender, add some water to it, and then blend it up and then pour it into your compost pile. Oh, wow. But it's it's a process. I, I know with you, you throw stuff in there. After a while, you take it out and go, oh, boy, right? Let's take it out. And that's the, that's what we have to change because you basically have to do it every day. Every time you do it, it's fresh. Put it in, the, in your tumbler. And it, it will break it down. It will break it down, but you have to, again... And, you know, you can't sit there for five minutes. You have to be tumble, tumble, tumble on a regular basis every day, on and off many times to turn it around. So it's not that hard to find a handyman to come and hook up a little windmill for you, and it just turns it turns the tumbler for you. It, you know, it has a little arrow that goes with the wind. And it's, it's like a big windmill generator you see in the, in the movies, you know, big. It's really heavy. Yeah, yeah. And then you have to figure out how to get it. Get, but... So we have to start making compost, and then the, there's a couple of things that you, what people need to understand is that if you go to a store and buy seeds, you want to grow an organic garden, it's not going to work. You want to be organic. So in order to be organic, you have to buy organic heirloom seeds. You can't go to the nursery and buy whatever they sell you already grown. Sometimes, so ideally, sometimes there's organic starters. Right, right. Over at the, in, the, in Ventura on Wednesday, the guy comes with a truck oh. and... And I've seen yeah. it at Do It Do It Center. Right, you have to. So what happens is people are there waiting for the truck to show up, and they take it right off the truck. <laughs> I want all these. 
they know when the or deliveries are. Yeah, right. I, I used to be like that. They were making to the uh, to the uh, to the nursery. I said, buy them right off the truck. I take all those things because well, first come, first come, first serve. The same thing with the bear root roses. People know when it shows up. I take those. You know, I missed out on that. But uh, but you don't really need to. Uh, ideally, if you really really want to get into, it, you want to do a greenhouse. You start them in the greenhouse. You start your plants, your seeds in the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. And then once they get growing, then you move them out to your garden. And you can do that for flowers and everything else you do. In other words, rather than start them and try to start them in that ground, you start them in your container when they have some roots already growing, then you can pop them into the ground. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that if you do the seed thing, because that's what you have to start doing now if you haven't already start a seed bank. I have my own seed bank that's been going on for maybe 50 years now. And that's a problem because... You know, you can actually keep seeds forever as long as you keep them without getting uh, mildew and stuff. They will store forever, you know. I would say, you know, a long time. But the idea that the reason why you have the seeds is to use it, is to grow yeah. with them. And to me, I, I don't want to die with all... I, I tell them, I, I, my will is bury me, my seeds with my seeds. Bury me with my seeds. That's what I want, <laughs> right? Just, oh, put the coffin in, put, me, put the seeds with me, and I'm good. But uh, you... Uh, the advantage of getting seeds, I've learned, I found out a long time ago, you can get stuff from around the world through seeds, right? You can get stuff from Asia, from Japan, from all these other countries. And if you grow them in the greenhouse and if you find the right ones for your environment, because sometimes they're not deserts and, you know, it, it depends to, uh, on the on the scenario, but you can usually get them going here. I never had any problem growing stuff. They're not supposed to grow anywhere else as long as you grow them in the greenhouse. You you take care of them. But the seeds are absolutely incredible. You can get stuff that you would not believe you can eat. You know, for starters, that's one of my favorite things is growing things. They look like flowers, but you can eat. You can eat chrysanthemum, for example. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 Exactly. So there's lots of stuff you can eat, and so the rabbits are, and animals are not hip to that yet. Uh, plus, you get all different incredible. There's like two or three hundred different varieties of tomatoes. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you name the varieties of vegetables from all kinds, and that's what uh, ideally you want to do here. You want to start growing because uh, you can. The raised beds is the best way to go, even in your place, rather than going growing in the ground. You can grow seven times more in the raised bed than you can in the ground because you have more soil more control of the, of the environment. Your place, for example, I would forget about doing a metal. You could do a metal with a raised bed inside it in the middle of each one, something like that. Incorporate the raised bed into it too as well. That way you can grow a lot more food in that little space and flowers all the way around it and everything, you know? Talking about in the front or where I have raised beds in the back? Everywhere. Because the meadow is kind of, you cannot turn a lawn into a meadow. I know you think you can, and we I, we tried it here, but it's constant pruning. It it because weeds grow as fast as the wildflowers. Well, what happens with the weeds is that the more metal flowers you have growing, the less weeds you have growing. That that's the way it works. You have when you have so much ground cover of plants and stuff growing, like for example, the carapia covers everything, inhibits the weeds from growing. So you have less and less weeds. So the carapia makes a perfect ground cover that everything else can be grown in that gets to be tall. So that's the way it works is you can uh, normally crowd out the weeds and the weeds on top of that only grow in, in, a, in, a, in a certain environment. They don't grow in a healthy soil environment. The weeds grow in a mineral deficient environment. So when you start having plants and other things growing in your metal, it becomes alive and you actually start getting earthworms. You're going to have less and less weeds in there automatically naturally it's not weeds it's big clump grass that has these long sprouted things right they're they're kind of weeds too and right. th even those things uh, can be pulled out because eventually you if you pull them out and stop them from growing and the other plants are growing and then it's a lot harder than for now it's easy because there's nothing there to stop them from popping up and they come up you know but if you look at where the flowers are growing there's hardly any weeds where all the flowers are at so they crowded everything out, and that's the point. That's where that's what I'm getting those long things out. It's all within the flowers, right? So it's a, it's a it's a process. It's just not going to turn into a middle a middle. If it was my place, I would go out there and constantly be on working on plant more seeds, do more seeds, more flowers, whatever ground. Just fill it with a, a, so much stuff growing, 
you know. And those weeds are not really bad in the long run because they can dig into the soil, so you can help them. They help a little bit in, in the beginning too, you know. So it's a process of bringing the soil back to life because uh, healthy soil, the weeds do not grow in healthy soil. Weeds are an indicator. If you look at the weeds, they're an indicator of the condition of the soil. It's always been that way. Certain weeds, you can tell the mineral deficiency by what weeds grow as mm -hmm. well. And so then also, too, you end up changing the pH of the soil. We haven't done any soil tests at your place, but I don't have to. You can save the $300. You'll see that the pH level is way high, probably 7.6, 7, 7.4. It should be neutrals. It should be like 6.8, which is on the other side of the scale. And so weeds grow in a certain range. Excuse is it, me? Is it more acidic? Alkaline. It's, it's, it's too alkaline? Yes, right. It's very alkaline. And the California soil, the California clay soil is very alkaline. Seven, two, seven, four, seven, six. That's very alkaline. Acid is on the other side. It'd be six, eight. Ideal scenario is six, eight. You want to have six, eight. That means that that's where all the trace minerals are available to the plant. Above that and below that. The reason for that is the microbes live in that range. That's when the microbes live in the, around six, eight. They like, they're like six, five to six, eight. Anything above that or below that, you're going to get less and less of the microbes and, and the worms, less and less of the worms as well. So in a healthy, minerally rich, bacterially rich environments, the weeds barely have a chance to, to take off because everything's so, so alive. So so many different things going on there. See, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what uh, Kathleen was talking about yesterday, the, the diversity of the, of the biology. And it's one of the things I'll be talking about later on today. The more of the biology is happening, the more microbes, the more uh, food is available, the more trace minerals are available, and the less there are the needs for the weeds. The reason the weeds are there in nature is the weeds go down, they pull up those trace minerals that's deficient, and they bring it back to the surface. That's the reason why weeds grow. Mm -hmm. See? You, you can tell if a weed, if you say that soil is trace mineral deficient because that weed is growing, then that's because that weed is going to be rich in that mineral. So that weed pulls the mineral up, and when it dies, it puts the mineral right back onto the surface. I wonder why we've been um, having these big monocrops and over tilling when it's pretty obvious that you would need diversity to get a combination of all the right microbes, like eating food. You need kind of a combination of food to have some good microbes in your gut. It, how come it's not been happening this way? I, I just, it's, it's, it, it's really simple. In the very beginning, farmers were organic. They had that. You had the diversity of, you had a farm, you had animals, you had all kinds of things going on. And then agri, uh, chemical agriculture came along, which says, use this fertilizer, right? And use, use this stuff. And then that's what they started doing. And they, they were taught, let's use that stuff. Uh, and they became like chemists, right? Let's, let's use this stuff for the soil. They, they start treating the soil more, not like a real thing that you need to pay attention to, but just something that they can use. It's the chemist would say this and that. It doesn't So that's why they got away from it. There are farmers now, they're, they're doing more and more of that. Exactly. That's why Kiss the Ground is all about, is paying attention to. But, for, but overall, we've taught everybody, use these chemicals, and you'll be fine. You'll, feed, you'll, you'll be able to feed the world. And you have to use this pesticide with it. And that's a whole, it's a whole business model. And they're taught that. Farmers are taught that, right? The farmers, they've got them all bamboozled as well. Exactly right. They're taught that. And then, and then they're stuck in it. They're, their property has been chemicalized all for a, their dad and their dad. And all these chemicals, nothing grow. And they're used to that. And they would love to get out of it. But they would have to literally figure out a way to clean up that soil if they wanted to to go and they have to be okay with some weeds growing you know that's why these chemicals are here to, to lose the weeds you get right. the weeds at bay and did it i mean you know sometimes the weeds aren't they okay i mean when you i just remember this monk this woman in korea and her garden and she had all sorts of junk all around it because that's just natural exactly right so like in your in your metal all those weeds you're trying to pull up you just have to think of it the opposite way they're they want to grow there anything that wants to grow there is like wonderful you want to grow there you want to yeah great because if you have those, all those weeds are less water will be running off they'll be holding water they'll be helping the ground so anything that wants to, i tell i told you not seen that many times 
that wants to grow here. I would leave it alone. Same thing with Sarah. There's some plants. I said, look, this wants to grow here. Don't we want to grow things that really want to grow here that, that does really well? Oh, that's a weed. No, it's not. Look at it. So it's weeds. We, the weed doesn't know it's a weed. We call it a weed. <laughs> but lots of things. Remember that lady was talking about dandelion yesterday. People think it's a weed. Gene says, oh, it's a scorch of the earth, the dandelion. Well, it's a nutritional herb. Yes, I drink the roasted dandelion tea. It's good. Exactly right. I, as a kid, I loved, I said, oh, roasted dandelion tea. The, I, I was using it as a coffee substitute. I thought it was actually wonderful. And people were pulling it up and throwing it away. So mm -hmm. I would switch my mental thinking about it and say, everybody should let everybody grow. That's what I would do. With my lawn, I would start growing what weeds, fine, everything come up. The weeds are going to die, and they're going to be returning to the soil. They're going to just aerate the soil. Where a weed goes, another plant can be, a seed can grow right in the hole where the weeds die, right? And and so you just grow more and more and more. That's what metal is, a mixture. This is a place in Northern California. It's called um, Peaceful Garden Farm and Garden Supply. It's 100% organic. They know me. They have these wonderful mixtures of California metals. 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 That you got in these kind of big jars that you poured out? <laughs> well, they, they have a, 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 what we'll do is I'll get you the catalog, because you'll look through it, you'll say, oh my goodness, they have so many different uh, metal plants that you can plant. And these are things, once they get going, they reseed themselves. And you don't never need to do the lawnmower thing. Like okay. I said, I would have done, I would have done just a path through the, through the metal, through the little, the, through there, a path with the benches and maybe a, a, a raised bed someplace, you can grow some things there too, you know what I mean? But that's what you want to do is you just don't get into, oh, I'm freaking out. Everything's growing. The grass is coming because the grass will, they need so much water, whereas the metal doesn't. That's the other thing. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? The carapia doesn't need that much water. And the plants are used to growing with the whatever they can get away. They die and then they come back again. Every year they get better and better because there's more and more soil in there. You know, but that's one of the things you want to do. You want to grab a good metal. Yes, you want to start either making soil or bringing soil, slowly but surely adding it on. One of the mm -hmm. things about the, the worm farm is like pretty soon we have to take everything out, tell the worms, all the worms over to this side, and then what's left in there is this very rich stuff that can be added anywhere on the property. Right. That you add, that you add underneath the fruit tree. That's why I, I would do like raised beds, just one raised bed surrounded by a, a, a wild plants out there, maybe three raised beds out there by, on an island. And that way in the raised bed you can grow your vegetable, but around it you have this you all... You saw all the flowers are there, and that was only just a small amount of them. Because you can literally, use, you saw the pictures I video at Central of Jean's place. It's just covered with different kinds of daisies and plants and flowers and everything. And she's all totally on a drip. Right. You know, so that's what you want. And you have these sprinklers overhead, which eventually will can be replaced to a drip once you have the, your islands going. Because you don't really need to water your paths, but you do want to water where are the islands and you can do that below too the area down below it's perfect setup to have more diversity and and that means forget the lawnmower if you have a lawnmower a mulching mower is better because it sends all the seeds back and everything right back into the ground again i want to get yeah. one right so we have to get off the off the the concept let's take everything away let's hang on to everything over at the, or you know you you know who it starts with am. I don't know if you give out people's names or not. They were probably not even watching it. But she throws the gardener throws tons. Every customer we go through is major amount of stuff going out. Well, going out. I know I'm not so bad. I I reduced my bins uh, last year. I only have one green bin. Great. Great, great. I know. I, I'm guilty. When the rosemary dies, it just looks so gnarly and nasty. I know. I just don't. I just get rid of it. It's just what. It, there's just I, old. piles of stuff here, yeah. and I, we, you know, rake under the, the lawn leaves into the side trees. And if it was my place, what I would do is I would buy a shredder, and run everything through the shredder, which just speeds up the process because always you have to let it dry and break down. If you don't have a shredder, then you get a, a wire cage, you put everything into a wire cage and it dries out, and then it just crushes up really fine, you know. But yeah. you have to do that. Well, I'll look into the shredder, see how much they are. 
Toyota's not expensive, uh, and I think there's, there's electric ones, but I used to have a gas-powered one that I don't really like. It's just kind of like the motor I have on my sprayer. It's a little mower. It's like a lawnmower. Do they but have sure. them at um, Do It Center and things like that? Sure, sure, sure. I, the, the easier to get them on, online because you get a wider choice. I'll go through some and look, so, look for one because then you can shred everything up, break it up, and then make your own soil there and bring the soil right back up, blend it into a nice soil, you know, and put it right side. Because that's what you have to start doing, putting soil mm -hmm. back out again. You have some nice places under the tree that hasn't been taking anything out that have, they have broken up into a really nice soil, like out in the front by the street. Underneath those trees, very, very nice. It's sore there. You should see the difference. There are worms in there. You know, there's a couple other places that have really, really nice. Like what behind the house where those big coral trees are, right under, under there, that's nice soil in there. It's uh, immediately all the leaves have been falling, breaking down. And so, yeah, th so that's what people have to do. They have to um, stop throwing away the process of making soil. And then they also need to key into trace minerals because Mother Nature is normally the one that remineralizes. We're going to have a guest on, uh, and they talk about remineralization. And uh, there's another lady. Uh, Great. I can't uh, wait. Who does a soil web. And she, we're, we're, we're sort of semi-friends because we've known of each other forever. And we're going to invite her on. Uh, Elaine, I think it was Elaine something. I forgot her name now. Oh. She does a soil web. Uh, so but... So we what we want to do is we all ask questions, we, Andy. Yes, dear. We got to roll out of here, but if they want to talk to you, oh, is the time up already? www.invisiblegardener.com. Yes, ma'am. The newsletter. Yes, ma'am. Check and out the super seaweed. People are buying it. It's wonderful stuff. It's got ninety six trace minerals in it. You like the newsletter? Her, her, we have a blog. Turned around like that. We have all kinds of stuff ha happening, and we're we're working on being uh, regular here, right? We are. We're trying to get to here once a week. No, we're going to do it once a week. We are going to do it once a week. Yeah, we are going to do it once a week. So okay. thank you, everybody, for tuning in. What do you think of our background? We're like real small now, little, little ants, little fairies. microbes. Right? Little fairies, right? That's what we have to do. We're a little fairy thing. Well, thank you, Michelle, for coming thank on board. Thanks, Andy. Um, everything have a great we have done. Day. Okay, same to you. Take care now, okay? See you later. Bye. Everyone, happy growing, everyone. Bye. Bye. Uh, hit the end button. There you go. And bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you for just listening to my show or watching it. See you next week. Remember, it's invisiblegardener.com. That's me, Invisible Gardener. Bye.